Uh, so, ooh, dodgy fence. <laughs> Fences going up all around us, aren't they, at the moment? So, officially, in about an hour, Wales is going to be on its so called fire break lockdown for the next 17 days. So, I thought I'd get some fresh air before the grand event. Um, yeah, Wendy and I were talking the other day about. <coughs> how how a lot of our consciousness and our, our attention gets placed on our external environments and, and what's happening in the outside world and you know how our freedoms or our supposed freedoms are being limited right now how they're being manipulated how psychologically we're all being kind of herded to some extent, like those lovely sheep you've just seen in the field. Um, and I always come back, we always come back to the film, The Matrix, which is, again, it's not, you know, spiritually, if you want to call it that, or if you want, if you want to, if you want to describe The Matrix as a, as a documentary, like some people have, it's, it's kind of, a little misguided, I feel that. Not misguided in that some of the inherent truth within what was being portrayed in that film isn't necessarily true. It's just the way it was portrayed. Unless you go a little bit deeper into mystery, unless you go a little bit deeper into various ancient spiritual teachings, but not only that, your own inner experience through communing with nature, communing within yourself, do you ultimately realise that this so-called matrix, whether it's a matrix of freedom outside of us or whether it's a matrix of a, a more intense prison environment or restricted environment, the matrix isn't really out there. It's kind of, it's in here. And, you know, we impose a lot of a lot of limitations on ourselves, you know, and I've spoken about this before in our in, in, in previous videos. But one thing that struck me, which was which was interesting, was the whole concept of the divine soul, the divine um, spark that is within us all and is growing as a as a soul. Um, you know, those sheep have a soul they have they have a consciousness to them that is evolving and going back to the film the matrix and if you remember in the film there were scenes of, of these they looked like embryos but i guess they were fully grown humans in these cocoons all plugged into these kind of hose pipes and machines and whatnot and but they look like fetuses they look like you know little you know little embryos growing but of course they weren't growing um, because their consciousness the consciousness and the energy that was keeping these embryos alive was feeding the system the machine it was feeding to some some might want to call it the mechanistic processes of nature and the mechanistic processes of nature ultimately can therefore then manifest through egoic manipulations into societies and civilizations, rules, laws, more mechanicity, um, more deterministic behavior, and, and ultimately further, further entrapment into illusion. So although those physical bodies were dreaming because that's what they were they were dreaming their reality right they were dreaming it they were feeding the dream feeding the machine and when neo got unplugged it was like the first thing he did was what got all the snot and crap out of him and <gasps> took a long deep breath okay a long deep breath and Whichever tradition you come from, the breath is ultimately 
a beautiful connection into spirit. It's a beautiful connection into helping you settle your nervous system, settle the mind, and settle that incessant attraction and chatter to the outside world. So a little bit of regular practice or breathing meditation where you're just focusing on your breathing, just concentrating on your breathing, so breathing consciously is really helpful, you know. It, it, it's, you know you're not going to get enlightened through breathing meditation, but it's certainly going to help you get to more of a state of relaxed acceptance of where you're at in your life, wherever you might be. And and also helps with clarity, helps with settling the emotional matrix, okay, that, that we're all part of, or that are that encompasses our consciousness. So our emotional body, our astral body, which is the seat of our emotions, can sometimes be more of a prison um, than our mind at times and the breath can really help settle those emotional angsts and those emotional reactions so that decisions and choices can be made with more more clarity and more objectivity clarity is ultimately objectivity I mean nothing nothing in this matrix um, that has gone through a subjective filter is true really objectively it's true but subjectively it's a dream and that includes all man-made laws okay no matter what they are they're only laws by agreement and and our agreement comes again through our subjectivity and, and how we want to create and what we want to create in our lives and also in the lives of others so it's worth remembering that as we go through these changes that no one's forcing you to do anything. Someone might force you to do something eventually. But I've always trusted to some extent that if someone forces you to do something against your will, whether it's your egoic will or whether it's divine will or whether you're tapped into that... <laughs> then at some level you're protected because <clears throat> through that force you're not giving consent ultimately you're not giving consent um, and one thing that God does do is grant choice okay choice we 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 are not as as humanoids deterministic beings we are we are we have the ability to think and choose and once we get our <clears throat> three centers in balance, our mind, our heart, and our motor centers in balance and functioning correctly, then our choices become harmonious. Not only for ourselves, but for others. When we're out of balance and we're out of center, you know, we might need a bit of fine tuning. It's like a, like a violin that might screech a little bit. So... <clears throat> So the divine embryo, let's call it, the soul that we think we are, okay, needs to grow. And if it's giving, always giving its energy out into the matrix, okay? And like I said, the matrix is within you first. The outer world is a manifestation of our collective matrix within us. And this matrix that's within us is made up of a plethora of complications and conditions you know conditioned thinking conditioned feeling conditioned action um, so to feed the soul and to grow the soul means to really start to look into that conditioning and comprehend it and meditate on it and understand it and look to where our conditioned thinking, feeling and actions or look to what those actions coming from each of our centers is creating outside of us. 
because freedom from outside will never happen. Freedom from this body, freedom from cyclical existence, freedom from samsara um, will never happen whilst we're still fixated on it and trying to change it all the time. Um, so yes, it's nice to have physical freedom. It's nice to, 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 to feel you can do what you want. Freedom to roam, freedom to think the way you want to think, freedom to eat what you want to eat. But everything, whether you feel it's altruistic, healthy or not, has some kind of karmic consequence to it. So we have to be very cognizant and very aware and very mindful of, of how we tread on this earth at the moment. And we haven't been treading particularly lightly. Over the last few centuries, we have been treading with hobnail boots, stomping the earth, just like this tractor has beaten up the earth going into the field. Um, and some karma's coming back. So some restrictions might be coming back to to hold us, hold us in a little bit and force us inward a little bit more to understand, you know, no matter whose new normal <laughs> is being projected at us, what kind of normal you would like to be living going forward uh, into the rest of this decade, really, because uh, it's going to be an interesting decade to be living in. Um, so, how do you grow the soul? You know, how do you, how do you, not go against the matrix, but how do you use the matrix to, to re, to re-raise your energy and re-internalize your energy and get, and conserve your energy to the extent that you're not feeding it out there too much. And ultimately, it's, it's a process of, of, transformation, transmuting, transforming the sense impressions that we get into something which is more powerful rather than reactive and forceful. And by that process, what you end up doing is you end up growing your inner strength. You end up growing your inner will power. Okay. The will power to maybe turn away from certain desires that may have blighted your life um, the willpower to be able to set boundaries, the willpower to be able to control and manage your sexual energy to an extent where it's not being <clears throat> abused, um, but, is also, but is being used to be more creative in your life. The willpower to overcome certain selfish desires um, and potentially look to... Um, look to redirect that into more selfless activity um, in small ways you know we don't all have to save the world um, and and to really get honest about <clears throat> how much we've been consuming and feeding off this matrix that we call life um, and how much energy we've really stolen from it <laughs> or from each other because where we have this level of consciousness trapped in bottles of attachment, belief, desire, and ego, and belief, by the way, doesn't mean you know anything. You know, if you believe something, it's likely you haven't experienced it. So, so it's okay to believe stuff, all right? But what's better is direct knowledge, gnosis, experience. Um, so to speak ultimately with authority on anything, you had to have, have have had some kind of experience in what you're speaking about. Um, most of my experience has been through pain and suffering. <laughs> Self-created most of it. But from that come some harsh lessons. Harsh lessons, but lessons that help create certain revelations and clarities in your life. So... Yeah, feed the soul. Feed the soul, not the matrix, not the internal matrix, not this consciousness that is bottled up in all these archetypal, let's not call them nasties, archetypal little children that want your attention and all your energy and, and, and want to consume and fulfill 
and be fulfilled through external means. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but from what I'm observing and what I have observed, it's my view that that has become completely out of balance. And redirect that energy into a more balanced, disciplined life, lifestyle, which which feeds and grows the soul and reveres spirit more. It's, it's, it's almost like, you know, you're reintegrating that spiritual cognizance that you know is there deep down in your life. You know, even if you're an atheist, um, you know, that for, for you not to believe in a God, <laughs> there has to be one, hasn't there? <laughs> Under the rule of duality. And if you do believe in God, then there also has to not be a God either, all right? That's, that's kind of how it works. And uh, maybe that's truth. <laughs> maybe there is and maybe there isn't a God at the same time. So, but, you know, God, not God again out there in the matrix, right? God inside, you know, the, 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 the consciousness, the energy, the, 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 the will, the driving force of, of the soul which, you know, once we allow and ask it to, to enter our lives more and more, can work miracles, you know, small little miracles, daily little miracles, daily little synchronicities, daily feelings of not constant bliss and peace, but moments which remind you that home actually isn't all that far away. So, so as we are being fenced in again into an external matrix, um, as we naturally resist some of that, um, as we naturally um, question things, let's also remember that there is a bigger picture, not only externally, but internally. And um, I, for one when I get the chance, we'll certainly be using these next two weeks to try to journey and discover more of that picture within myself. So anyway, see you next time. <laughs>